All right, so what we're here to do today is this is a 44 by 28 house slab with a 14 by 12 utility room on it and then this is a this is going to be an 8 foot by 44 foot patio so all we're doing today is we're forming up the house to 44 by 28 we got to get the boards in get them square get them pinned get them set to grade so the plumber can come in and rough in all his plumbing but he needs the forms in place to rough in the plumbing so that's what we're here to do today and then we'll come back actually if i'd have brought enough forms for that little thing i, I didn't know about that that's an extra we to form that up too but i'll come back and form that up later then we'll get all the house poured and then we'll do the patio afterwards all right so when we show up on a slab like this this is the part of the slab prep that's gone wrong is you know the builder is the general contractor he's the one that hires us he subs the slab work out to us he subs the uh, excavation work the dirt work everything that has to do with the house you know the septic tank the driveway the slab prep like this out to the excavator so when we show up ready to go to put the forms in we kind of expect that the slab is prepped properly and what we mean by that is you know it's it's level it's compacted it's you got good gravel and these edges that are thickened we call these a haunched edge slab or an alaskan slab i know a lot of you guys call them grade beams but in maine you know this is basically just a haunch slab we do a ton of these so the edges are thickened to 12 inches but the slab rolls up to six inches you know on the flat part you can see where he's got that dirt all compacted so today you know we we roll in get our forms off get them all screwed together like we need to put them in place but the the haunches the outside edges of the haunches are the exact same width as the slab needs to be so there's no room for to put our forms in our forms are going to hit the dirt on the outside that's that's really not dug out what what they really you know the outside edges really should be dug at least a foot wider all the way around than the slab so if it's 44 by 28 you know you kind of want it dig it out 46 by 30 a foot on the outside of the slab and then up to two feet on the inside of the slab so um this excavator guy was he actually did a really good job with the using the gravel he was using getting it level getting it compacted so he, he did a really good job in that aspect he just had never done a haunt slab like this before so you know we're explaining to him that this needs to be dug out deeper so we have plenty of room to use our forms get our pins in use the screw gun and all that and that's what i'm explaining to him right now so that's really the part of the slab prep that went wrong and you know he was really nice about it he's like no problem i'll do whatever you need me to do um i'm right here i can dig it out right now so at least you know it didn't really take him too long to get the edges redug to at least where we could get the forms in our job today was just to get the forms in for the house so and get them set to grade you know square and set to grade get them pinned so the plumber can come in and do rough in the plumbing because he needs something to measure off from he's got to put plumbing in the kitchen plumbing in the bathrooms and you know whatever else he's got to do so he needs something accurate to measure from to make sure it gets in the right spot that's why we need to put the forms up and then so once the plumbing goes in then the builder comes back and he puts down his styrofoam and they're putting radiant heat in this so they'll have the the heating guy come in lay the radiant heat tube in and then we come back after that i mean that could be a week or two weeks from now that that all gets done it doesn't always get done the next day and then we come back and we double check our forms we put more pins in if we need to we put our kickers on we get our wire mesh laid get a rebar you know we usually put two rows of rebar around the edge as we pour so there's still some prep for us to do and another thing this little this little side thing this 12 by 14 you see over there on the left that was another thing i wasn't prepared for today i didn't know that was all ready to go we just were told hey come form the house up so the the plumber could get here and do his thing well i mean it would have been nice i would have brought i didn't even bring enough forms to do that so we, anyway we ended up just getting the house formed 
and then came back a couple days later and formed up the little 12 by 14 utility room there on the side. The utility area really didn't have any other plumbing in it other than those two pipes you see right there. So that wasn't as big a deal. But, you know, as you can see, we're here waiting right now as the excavator's over there digging that, that haunch over there a little bit wider so we can get our forms in. Normally, we'll just, we'll get this banged out in no time, but... So now we're just going to measure everything out. That's a 44-foot form right there. When we form up, a, whether it's a house slab or a garage slab, you know, we like to have our forms just a little bit longer than the actual dimensions. That way, when we go to screw the corners together, it gives us something to screw into. You can see I got 44, two and a half there. So it gives me plenty of room to get my, my other board butted into that one and get it screwed in. But that was really all the part of the prep that was going wrong. The gravel this guy used was like a one inch minus gravel. It packed really, really good. It's going to be a really good sub base for this. There was a lot of ledge under this uh, area right here. That's why they didn't put any type of foundation or frost wall in. They couldn't get it in. There was too much ledge. So they decided just to go with a house slab. Uh, we do a ton of these slabs, really. I mean, a lot of people build on slabs here in Maine. Uh, they just basically don't want the basement. They don't need it. They don't want it. They just want a one level house. Simple. And that's basically what it is. So we do a ton of these. We're going to get the frame of it formed up. And then we'll go measure out for our squares. So we're just double checking the lengths on these. Making sure we have the exact lengths that we need. Getting everything screwed together. Making sure it's going to fit in here after we square it. Because sometimes, sometimes when they dig out those haunches, they're not perfectly square where they need to be. And, you know, it's it's a lot easier to square up a slab with forms like this with boards than it is just to square up pins in a dirt. And, we've you know, we've shown up to jobs and the, the haunches aren't anywhere near square. We might have a foot and a half of of a uh, haunch dug on the inside on one side then six inches on the other so we're gonna make sure he's gonna hang around and just wait till we get everything squared up that's basically how we get our forms screwed together we we usually what's these deck screws with a t25 screw head on them we used to use nails years ago but we found that we can use these screws i mean i don't know multiple times five to ten times and it's just a lot easier to strip too. You're not kind of tugging and pulling on a nail. Whenever you we use we used to use double-headed 16D nails, and whenever you pull them out, they would always bend. So you're pretty much just throwing them away after the first use. So we're getting our square now. We're just going our diagonals. We want to try to get the exact same measurement diagonal to diagonal, and that's how we square things. We've never had a problem with something being out of square doing it this way. Go. As long as we're careful go pulling the tape, yeah. pulling the tape way. the same, you know, both ways, you could take your and, push and then the getting our corners right where they need to be, and then we'll pin our corners, make sure the corners don't move. Yeah. Three quarters of an inch. So if it's not perfectly square, like this one was out about two inches when we first measured it, all we got to do is slide the form, you know, one way or another, half the distance it's out. So if it's out two inches. I only really need to slide it an inch one way or the other. 52 feet quarter inch. And then that's going to get us to where we need to be. So that's basically how we square things so it didn't end up being too bad. And now here I am. I'm going to pin that corner tight. I don't want the corners to move after we get it square. If they if they do seem like they're moving, then we'll just recheck it and make sure they're still square. But those metal stakes we use, we got... 18 inch ones we got 24 inch ones we got 36 inch ones we use the ones that are that'll hold the boards nice and tight depending on what the sub base is today basically we just use 24 inch ones they got all kinds of holes through them so we can screw right through them that's definitely much easier than using wooden stakes <laughs> all right dude, we just gotta pin it so once we get those corner ones in then we'll We'll put a screw in each corner, run a string over the top of the form. Then we'll use that string to make sure everything's straight. Typically, we'll when we pin these like I'm doing right now, like what T is doing over there on the left, 
will actually pin the form in maybe like a quarter of an inch so it's bowed in. That way when we pour the concrete up against the form, if it does want to push it out, at least it's already in a little bit. And if it doesn't push it out, then we can just tap on that stake a little bit with a hammer and tap it out to straight. I'm going to check my grade. The guy ended up grading this to within about an inch. So I'll take an average of that and then I'll raise the I'll raise the grade stick six inches. Actually eight inches because he's putting two inches of styrofoam down. And that's what we're going to use to grade to set our forms to. So he's putting the, the builder will end up putting two inches of styrofoam down on that flat part in the middle and then down inside the haunch too. He'll cut it and put it down in there. And that'll pretty much take up that gap I'm, I'm creating right now as I lift the form up off the gravel. The two inches of styrofoam will, will fill up that gap. So the next step after this, after we get everything set to grade like we're doing right now, is basically we, we take off and then the builder comes in. You can see he's got his styrofoam in. You can see the plumbing over there on the other side. The plumber came in, did his thing. And then the radiant heat guys staple down his radiant heat to the top of the styrofoam. That's what's going to heat the house. And then we'll just double check. We'll put more pins in. We'll do a little backfilling. We'll double check, make sure the forms didn't move at all. Make sure everything's perfect. We'll put in some kickers here just to, just to make sure the forms aren't going to bow out because there's a ton of pressure. When you're pouring concrete a, a foot thick by, you know, 18 inches to two feet wide, that really pushes them forms. So... We'll put kickers about every four feet. Typically that does the job. We don't usually have any trouble with the forms bowing out if we do that. And then we'll get our wire mesh laid. We always use the flat sheets. That way they lay nice and flat. This was pretty good because we could lay it right over the tubing, which kept it up off the styrofoam. That's basically, you know, the prep for a house lab right here in Maine. That's kind of how we do it. We do, we do a ton of them a year this way. And anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out this video right here, and I'll see you on the next one.